a rapidly intensifying storm in the Gulf of Mexico. Certainly something you don't want to see, especially considering it is still July and we are still sort of in the beginning of the hurricane season. We still have August and September to go. Those are the busy months. And already we are looking at what is looking like um, Hurricane Hannah. Not quite there yet, but boy, it is getting there very quickly. So we're just going to hang on here just for a couple more seconds. Let a couple other people uh, click on here, and then we'll get started. But uh, clearly a uh, very interesting, very, uh, if, you, if you don't mind me saying, a very sexy-looking picture here as far as storms are concerned, especially when dealing with hurricanes. And this is about as classic-looking of a uh, storm as you're going to get uh, as far as a developing tropical system goes in the Northwest Gulf. All right, I think we've got enough people on here, probably a couple of thousand at this point, so let's get started. Good evening, I'm meteorologist Blake Matthews. Once again, we are tracking a rapidly developing system in the northwest Gulf of Mexico. You don't need a meteorologist to say that looks really nasty, and it is. And we're, the hurricane recon plane is out there right now. They are finding flight level winds at 72 miles an hour. And uh, so this thing on the verge of hurricane already wasn't anticipated to become a hurricane until tomorrow morning. It is ahead of schedule, at least according to the satellite. Now you can see what I'm looking at here. What we're looking at in the white is very tall cloud tops. We're talking 60, 70,000 feet in the air and those temperatures which that's really what we're looking at here. The, the brighter those colors, the colder the cloud tops. And we're talking about cloud tops that are 80 below zero. Okay, that's how tall into the atmosphere these things are. And when you see the white of the thunderstorms, these really tall, intense thunderstorms beginning to wrap around a center of circulation. And clearly you can see where the eye is going to be right there. And you can see that they are trying to wrap all the way around that center. What we're looking at here is a rapidly intensifying uh, tropical storm here. Again, probably on the verge of hurricane. We may actually see this upgraded to a hurricane at 10 o'clock tonight. And if they don't do it tonight, most assuredly it will be done first thing tomorrow morning. Either way, Texas is in for a hurricane, it looks like, especially for the south coast. We're talking about areas near South Padre Island, up towards Baffin Bay, Corpus Christi. It'll be in that area where we're looking at landfall. Here's the very latest information. As of 8 o'clock this evening, 50 mile an hour winds moving to the west at 10. That pressure down to 998 millibars, but this is old information. We're going to see all of this updated here within about the next 30 minutes. I suspect that we'll see the pressure down to about 990 maybe even a little bit lower than that. Remember, that's an inverse relationship. The lower that pressure goes, the higher the winds go. So uh, that's not a good thing when you see the pressure lowering. And I think that we're going to see it down probably in the upper 980s, maybe right around 990, 991. The plane is out there right now. And every single time they pass through the center of the circulation, they find a lower pressure. So we know that the storm is currently strengthening. And we're probably going to see these winds jump up to 65, 70 miles an hour, if not a little better than that. Of course, 74 is what you need to get a hurricane. And in anticipation of that, the Hurricane Center did go ahead and issue a hurricane warning for a stretch of the Texas coast. That's going to be from Mesquite Bay all the way down towards Baffin Bay, and that does include Corpus Christi. And we may actually see this hurricane warning expanded a little bit to the south because some of the indications are this may actually end up turning off to the west and southwest as it begins to approach land. Now, we've got about 12 hours left, maybe a little better than that, before this storm actually makes landfall. That's plenty of time to see more intensification with this system. In fact, we're going to see this thing intensify all the way until it crosses land, it looks like. Certainly not good news for the folks down there near Corpus Christi. Now, it's better news for us, partly because the stronger that the storm gets, especially if it becomes a low end or even a moderate hurricane, it tends to pull all the moisture very close to the center of circulation, so it sort of pulls it away from the land areas, right? So even though we are expecting to get walloped here with some heavy rain as we get into your Saturday and Sunday, the bulk of the moisture, I think, is going to be our, to our west and southwest, and the, and the National Weather Service agrees with that. That's why they only have our southwest counties in this flash flood watch as we speak. So this does include five of our, of our local counties, Fort Bend, Galveston, Brazoria, Matagorda, and Wharton counties. Now, if you look carefully, you see this blue area right in here. That is a storm surge warning for a water rise of one to three feet. So, just a heads up if you've got if you've got uh, interest down there along the immediate coast. 
Again, what we're looking at here is old information. Uh, we'll have a brand new cone here probably within the next 30, 35 minutes, maybe a little longer than that. Of course, the Hurricane Center is always going to wait to see what the Hurricane Recon plane finds in the center of the storm. They're in there right now, and then they radio all that information back to the Hurricane Center, and then they come up with their advisory. So it may be a little later tonight, but the bottom line is I think we're going to see this upgraded, uh, if not to a hurricane tonight, first thing tomorrow morning, making landfall maybe uh, a little stronger than what we're seeing here. Right now, as of 5 o'clock, they were saying 75 miles an hour, maybe even a little better than that. So as we take a look at the satellite, really wasn't that bad of a day across the Houston area. We did see a few downpours push through the Houston area earlier, uh, and, and a wind gust of 42 miles an hour down there at the Johnson Space Center earlier this afternoon. So I think we're going to see the same thing as we get into your Saturday and Sunday. I do not think that tomorrow is going to be a washout, but where it rains, the rain is going to be heavy, it is going to be torrential, and it could cause some flash flooding. So again, not a total washout. It's not going to rain sun up to sun down, but it will rain tomorrow, at least for a couple of hours, and that's when the rain could be intense, especially if we see some feeder bands beginning to set up here across southeast Texas. And those feeder bands not only could produce torrential rain, but they could also produce uh, some short-lived tornadoes. Of course, we have a lot of spin in the atmosphere with a spinning tropical system just to our south, so it's certainly not out of the question. So just be mindful of that. Again, not a whole lot going on this evening, but as we expand the view here a little bit, look at the satellite presentation. I mean, folks, it doesn't get much better than that. It reminds me very much of a couple of hurricanes. It reminds me first of Hurricane Claudette back in the early 2000s that made landfall just north of Matagorda Bay, a very disorganized system, rapidly intensified, becoming a Category 1 hurricane just before moving inland just north of Matagorda Bay. The other one it reminds me of, sort of, is Hurricane Ike, and the reason why it reminds me of that is because most of the deep convection with this system is on the south side. If you remember back to September 2008 when Ike came through Houston, uh, most of the a lot of people commented, and myself included, that the worst weather was after the eye passed by. And normally it's the other way around. Normally you get the most intense weather before the eye. With Ike, it was after the eye, and we're seeing a lot of the strong thunderstorms on the west and south side of this circulation. So what does that mean for Houston? Well, you'll notice it's a little bit drier up here, some drier air being pulled in off the continent. So that may save us from the really flooding rains, um, but I don't want to be too... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? I don't want to be too exact. I don't want to be too sure of that because these things, certainly there's always an element of uh, uncertainty with tropical systems. And if this thing were to wobble maybe a little bit further to the north, that pushes that rain a little bit further to the north. So again, I, I'm cautiously optimistic that we're going to see some heavy rain two to four inches, isolated amounts four to six, maybe a little better than that. But I think the bulk of the weather is going to be in South Texas because if you move this whole thing over into South Texas, you'll notice, yes, it's raining across South Louisiana. And if you were to push that over here, I do think that we're going to see some downpours, but maybe not torrential like we could have seen if the storm was a little bit closer to us. So something we're going to continue to watch. Again, we're not out of the woods as far as the heavy rain threat goes, but we are out of the woods as far as a wind threat goes. This is not going to be a wind threat for the Houston area, and that is certainly good news. But I'll tell you what, I can stand here and look at this all day long. Look at the eye trying to clear out right there in the center of circulation. You see this yellow area right there, that sh those strong thunderstorms? That is what we call a developing eye wall. And when you get a hurricane, normally you see that little yellow band forming all the way around the center of circulation. So uh, as far as meteorology goes, wow, that's impressive. If you are watching tonight from Corpus Christi or down just south of there, you, this is a very, very worrying worrying. What am I trying to say? It's very worrying to see that as far as uh, intensification goes. So we could be looking at a uh, Category 1, maybe Category 2 hurricane pushing into South Texas, just south of Corpus Christi, and that's going to put Corpus Christi in Bath and Bay right there in the worst side of the hurricane um, as this thing pushes in. Now, as far as our weather goes along the upper Texas coast, this takes us into 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. You'll notice we are going to see some heavy rain bands set up and push right in through the Houston area. Now, if you're watching from areas say up near Highway 105, you're watching from Willis, you're watching from Huntsville, maybe out there towards Grimes County. I think the rain threat is lower for you guys than it is for areas near Galveston County, Chambers County, right there along the coast, and you get that direct feed right off the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, here in the Houston area, right along the I-10 corridor, yes, heavy downpours will be expected, but again, they're transient. They're going to be moving. The, the storm, uh, whether it's a tropical storm or hurricane, that's the good news with this, is that this thing is going to continue to roll right on through. This is not 
not going to stall out. So once it, once it moves inland, it's going to keep going. So we'll have one or two days of rain spiraling into the upper Texas coast. But again, the worst of the weather will be confined to south Texas. And we'll continue to watch for that possibility of isolated torrential downpours and a spotty tornado or two as uh, these uh, feeder bands uh, spiral on in. So take a look at the amount of rain. Uh, generally, the, the, the model has the same idea that I have as far as where the heavy rain amounts are going to be. The closer to the coast you are, the heavier that rain is going to be. So don't look at the numbers and say, oh, well, I'm in Pearland. I'm only going to get two inches of rain tomorrow. No, you could end up with five. The idea here is that the heaviest of the rain is going to be isolated or confined generally to the west and southwest of the Houston area and in our coastal counties. If you're up north, just as I mentioned, College Station, maybe a half, three quarters of an inch of rain, one inch of rain in Conroe. So the, the model has the correct idea, I think. The further inland you are, the lesser those rain amounts are going to be. The further, the closer to the coast and the further south and west you are of the Houston area, the heavier that rain is likely to be. Now, the reason why this storm is headed to south Texas, as I mentioned earlier in our newscast, we have a powerhouse high pressure system sitting to our north. And um, a, a hurricane is an area of intense low pressure. And when you have high pressure to the north, they sort of repel each other. And uh, the high pressure sort of acts as a brick wall. Hurricanes are very lazy. They, they just kind of go kind of where they're told. They don't really want to fight. They just kind of, eh, okay. I'll go over here. So that's exactly what's happening here. You got a big dome, a big wall essentially setting up here right over the heart of the country. And the, the circulation right around that high is clockwise. And you can see right where the brick wall, so to speak, has set up. And that is right through the central Texas coast. So Hannah, Hurricane Hannah, Tropical Storm Hannah, whatever. It couldn't come to Houston even if it wanted to. In fact, this high pressure is probably going to expand a little bit, and that's why we're looking at that cone dropping to the west and southwest. So this is not going to be a Houston problem as that high pressure system is sitting to our north, and that really saved the day as far as Houston goes. But unfortunately, it's not going to spare our friends in south Texas. So two to four inches of rain is what we can expect here along the upper Texas coast, six to eight in some isolated amounts. I've lived in Houston almost 30 years. I've seen these things time and time again. Again, they always have a trick up their sleeve, and it's not if they're going to reveal it, it's where, and uh, that's when some areas can get 10 inches of rain unexpectedly. So that's why we watch these things, because there's always an element of surprise. There's always an element of, of uncertainty with the track of these things. So again, I don't think that this is going to be a widespread flood issue for the Houston area, but if you get six to eight inches of rain, especially if it happens pretty quickly, you could see some isolated flooding problems in your neck of the woods. So a flash flood watch mainly to the west and southwest. It does include our five local counties of Fort Bend, Brazoria, Galveston, uh, Wharton, and uh, Matagorda counties. It's off the top of my head, okay. And uh, breezy and subtropical, uh, subtropical storm force winds are expected here uh, across the Houston area. So big rain chances as we get into Saturday and Sunday. 70%, 80%, 90%. Bottom line is it's going to rain this weekend, both days. 60% chance as we get into Monday. And then we do dry it out a little bit as we get into Thursday and Friday and temperatures warm back up into those mid 90s. So if you're just joining us, let me uh, step off camera here just for one second and kind of uh, show you exactly what we're looking at once again. Let me see what the um, hurricane hunters, I think I skipped over that graphic uh, just moments ago. Let me see if I can click that bad boy on and see what they are finding. I did. And we'll walk through this one more time. So again, we're looking at the satellite picture and it's very ominous. And the reason why, as I mentioned, notice the thunderstorms. Look at that little clearing area right there. You see that? Look how the thunderstorms are beginning to build around the center. It almost looks like a donut. And when you see that, this storm is rapidly intensifying right now. And we are seeing that with the pressure drop, the lower that pressure goes, the higher the wind goes. So the information you see here, is old news. This is old news. It's not accurate anymore. We're likely going to see these winds significantly higher, 60, 65, 70 miles an hour, maybe even hurricane force here uh, by the time we get the 10 o'clock advisory. And that pressure, 998, likely going to be significantly lower as well. We could see it as low as 990 or 991. There's that hurricane warning. We could see that expanded a little bit further to the south as the storm continues to rapidly organize. Here locally, even though we do have that tropical storm warning in effect from San Luis Pass all the way down through Matagorda Bay, I really don't think we're looking at a wind event across the upper Texas coast. And there's that flood watch I was mentioning earlier. So there's that bend. There's that southwest bend 
Ben that I was talking about, thanks in part to that high pressure system to our north. So again, not a Houston problem, not a Central Texas problem. This is strictly going to be a south of Corpus Christi hurricane as this thing pushes on in, and it could have winds even higher than 75 miles an hour, according to the National Hurricane Center. So here's a look at where the hurricane hunters are right now. You'll notice it sort of looks like an X pattern. This is what we call an alpha X pattern. And the reason why they do that is they are sampling all quadrants of the storm. Obviously, the strongest quadrant of the storm in most hurricanes is going to be to the right of the center of circulation. This is what we call the right front quadrant. And this is going to be where the most significant wind, the significant surge, and the significant rain is going to be. But they fly all four quadrants in an X pattern. And you can see, look at that. They're looking at a pressure now of 992 millibars. I see 55 miles an hour here. I saw earlier on the uh, back channels of the, uh, of the internet showing maybe 70 miles an hour. So we'll continue to watch this. The bottom line is this storm is strengthening and it's strengthening pretty quickly. But regardless of how strong the system becomes, the effects along the upper Texas coast will be the same. So even if this powered up overnight into a category three hurricane, not in the forecast. I'm just saying if, if it became a, a major hurricane, uh, the impacts along the upper Texas coast would be the same. Strictly a rain event, maybe some higher tides, maybe a little coastal flooding, but again, not an issue as far as wind and really not much of a flood issue as well. Just heavy rain along the upper Texas coast. The biggest impacts, at least right now, expect to be in the Corpus Christi area to Baffin Bay. And of course, that could change. That's why we're going to continue to stay on top of it uh, for the next three days as this thing works its way toward the south Texas coast. And uh, we're just patiently waiting from the National Hurricane Center. We should be getting an update in about the next 25 minutes uh, on a uh, strengthening storm, tropical storm, uh, that is very likely to become a hurricane first thing tomorrow morning. We're going to wrap this up right now. Uh, if you have any questions, follow me on Twitter, at KJUBlake11. I'd be more than happy to answer your questions. Um, other than that, I think we're going to wrap this up. We'll see you on the air coming up tonight at 10. Have a great evening, everybody.